click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in the previous topic we have discussed about the optical isomerism as well as the geometrical isomerism. And now in this topic we are going to talk about the salient features of the valence bond theory. And based on that we are going to talk about what is the application of valence bond theory on the metal complex. This is what I am going to talk about with the help of this topic. So friends, before understanding the application of the valence bond theory, for that we have a different lecture. But now let us understand what is the main feature of the valence bond theory that is applicable in the metal complex. So talking about the first one, that is a definite number of vacant metal orbitals such as S, P, and D provided by the central metal ion are utilized for the formation of the coordination bond with ligands. We understand because the more the number of the vacant orbital it would be provided by the metal atom so in that case more ligand molecules will approach the metal and that's the reason there will be formation of coordination covalent bond with the metal and the ligand so therefore this is nothing but the first point and now let me discuss about the next point the next point is that is the number of vacant metal orbitals utilized that is due to the formation of a bond with the ligands so therefore that is equal to the coordination number of the metal ions so in that case the more the number of the bonds that would be formed by the metal as well as with the help of the ligands so that would be the coordination number and that is what it is about the second point that is what we have discussed and now let me discuss about the next one that is the hybridization of vacant metal orbitals results in the formation of equal number of hybrid orbitals so in that case even the center metal atom that should undergo a particular hybridization and then only it will produce certain orbitals that would be approached by or that will have an overlap with the orbitals of the ligand and that's the reason that the more the overlap or the extent of overlap will decide the strength between the metal as well as the ligand and that's the reason that depending upon the hybridization also there are different shapes and that is what we have discussed in the previous chapters also that is what we have discussed in the chapter that is nature of chemical bond and now let us understand this point that is the fourth point that is each ligand provides at least one orbital which contains a lone pair of electron so in that case basically whenever a ligand obviously we understand that is the ligands are of various types that is monodented bidented tridented so therefore each ligand at least provides one lone pair of electron and that one lone pair of electron is basically towards the metal and that's the reason that is a bond forms between the metal and the ligand so now let us talk about the next one so the next point is the inner complex are formed by the hybridization of n minus 1 d orbital while talking about the outer complex the outer complex are formed by the hybridization of n d orbitals so talking about the next point that is the presence of the strong field ligands like nh3 and ca that is the cyanide ion during the complex formation results in the spin pairing of the metal ion electrons so what is spin pairing of metal ion electrons so this is what i'm going to talk about in the next topic but this all are nothing but the salient features of the valence bond theory for the metal complex and that's it so thank you friends for watching this video i hope you have understood this points very clearly and i hope i'll see you next time till then don't forget to subscribe to channel thank you so much